Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first edition of Revit Pure Live. I'm your host, Nicolas Quetelier. I'm very excited to be doing this. It's the first ever live stream, uh, Revit Pure live stream. I have been part of uh, streams with Jeff, aka the Revit Kid, before. Uh, but this is the first time I'm on my own, so I hope everything goes well. So. There's quite a setup to do to do live streams like uh, like this. I hope everything is going well. If there's any technical difficulty whatsoever, if there's sound issues or anything really, just let me know in the chat and we can figure it out. So having a look there, uh, 34 people. Great. So if any time during the stream you have any question, please let me know. Just having a look here to make sure everything is going well. Yeah, I think everything is working fine. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about railings and especially about balusters. Um, but quickly, I wanted to properly introduce myself. I am Nicolas Quetelier. I am an architect and BIM manager. I am based in Quebec City, Canada. So yes, pretty cold here today, I've got to say. So just checking out quickly where everyone is based. Someone for Singapore, uh, Richard from Anaheim, Luis from Ecuador. So people all around the world. Pretty exciting to see. Um, somebody from Philadelphia also and from Oregon. So hi to everyone. Uh, let me just switch the view here. Okay, so. Just wanted to introduce what I am doing. This is Revit Pure. This is uh, my website that I've been working on since 2016. Just wanted to quickly introduce what I'm trying to do here so you understand where I'm coming from with this dream. Uh, so Revit Pure is mostly a blog. You can have a log. look at the blog section here. Posts that goes from beginners to intermediate to advanced users. And I have a few premium packages, uh, the most famous one being called Basics, mostly aim at beginners and also at BIM managers trying to find good material uh, to give to their team. It's made to be as simple as possible to use as many images so you can find more information about it uh, on the Revit Pure website. Also, another course called Design. Uh, which is made to help architects and designers create beautiful views in Revit, beautiful elevations, renderings, uh, presentation plans like this, how to create nice looking tree families, how to create uh, good looking entourage to the families, like in this section perspective, rendering uh, with Enscape, uh, Lumion, whatever. And also we're talking about VR in Revit. Uh, and finally, you can have a glance at the Revit Pure Basics template. So anyway, this is um, stuff that you can find on our website. But now I'm going to give you the, the link to the super secret uh, content. And it is revitpure.com slash live. It's also in the link in the description below. Uh, the first thing you're going to find here is a, a pamphlet called uh, Railings Part 2, issue number uh, 19, which is due to be publicly released by email in January. But since you guys decided to join the live stream, I'm giving it away exclusively. Um, so if you're not familiar with pamphlets, the idea here is to create uh, the pamphlets are PDF guides, about 30 to 40 pages usually, that try to uh, deconstruct a complicated topic in Revit and explain it as simply as I can. You can have a look at all the available issues here, phases, schedules, plan notes, 3D view, line weights. And uh, the latest one was um, Railings Part 1, and this is now Railings Part 2. And most of part two, I'm going to be in, the, in this live stream, I'm going to explain what is going on in this brand new pamphlet. And today we'll be mostly talking about balusters and posts while building railings. Uh, the previous edition was mostly talking about rails and some basic features of the railing, but today everything's going to be about balusters. So make sure to download the pamphlet 
uh, if for some reason you can get the, the, the full show, the pamphlet is a pretty good uh, resource for you and you can use to follow along. In addition to the pamphlet on uh, the URL here, you will find the presentation PDF of the live show we'll be using. Uh, basically, it's similar to the pamphlet, but I just kept the headers and the images. And finally, there's a sample file in Revit uh, 2021, where if you want to try the exercise and if you are wondering what I'm using during the show, uh, you can use this file here and try by yourself or may you also get access to the completed families I'll be showcasing during this stream. And finally here you will find an image of a classical baluster profile um, that we'll be using later on uh, to create a baluster family. So that's it for the explanation. Now let me just grab a little bit of water. And also, uh, as I've mentioned, this is uh, meant to be a relaxed show and happy hour style. So I'll be drinking oh, here this local beer from Quebec called uh, Joufflu. It is a uh, white beer. So cheers to everyone. Just pouring that. Hey, thanks for your patience. So cheers, everybody. Thanks for being part of the stream. This is pretty exciting. 59 people. I mean, if you put 59 people in a room, it's quite a lot of people. So pretty excited to have that many people on the stream. And don't forget to ask any question during the show. Okay, so back here, and I'm going to open Revit. I'm going, I have a plan view here. And I also open a 3D view, which is the most helpful way uh, to be testing the, the little railings. So if you download uh, um, the sample file I've put on the website, on the link, you'll get access uh, to this file here. Let me go back here to the presentation. I'll zoom out a little bit like this. Okay, so we'll be talking about balusters and posts. Just a quick reminder, balusters are the vertical elements of a railing and the posts are usually the vertical elements which are at the start of the railing, at the end of the railing, or they can be in the middle, either at intersection uh, when using corner posts, which I'll be talking about later. Uh, if you look on the right at the families, usually a baluster family is cut diagonally. Uh, so the family, uh, when you make a baluster family, you have to think about that to make sure that when you're on the stairs and the, the railing is slope, obviously the balusters will be probably able to be cut. While usually opposed uh, families are always vertical, like you can see in this image, they're usually not cut diagonally. They're mostly always uh, vertical and flat on the top. And so this menu is quite scary, right? I know, just looking at, at the comments, but I know the, the balusters menu has caused me problem. It is complicated. I hope Autodesk at some point make it a little more user-friendly. There's many parts to it. It's not clear what in, in here is related to what. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is to talk about the main pattern. You can see right here which is where the main balusters element are placed. Everything on the bottom is about post, which we'll also be talking a little bit later. So if I go back to just a second. Yep, sorry. If I go back to my presentation here, I have an example where of a family where there are two different uh, balusters. And the important element to think about here is the is called distance from previous. So on, on the first one, the distance from previous is 100. On the second one, the distance from previous is 125. And we're using two different families of balusters in this case. And you can see on the image, uh, we have a red kind of uh, circle-like baluster. And we have a yellow one. 
And you can see the yellow one would be the first because the distance from previous is 100, which means it's 100 millimeters away uh, from the red. And the order in which these balusters are placed and the distance from previous is set is using this point as the start and this point as the end, which is represented by the blue arrows. The blue arrows was introduced in Revit 2817 or 18, if I'm not mistaken. And it's really used to indicate the start and end of the railing. So let me have a look at that. Yeah, so if I select this railing, I'll showcase directly in Revit what is going on. So just for some beginners, I don't want to go too quickly. I'm selecting the railing. I'm clicking on edit type. And then here on the third option, go to baluster placement. And on the top here, that's where you have the balusters menu. Uh, here, the first baluster is uh, the square one. So I'm going to duplicate it. Click here on the right, duplicate, and I'm going to put it down. I'm going to change the name, call it uh, bal number two. And I'm going to switch the type to the 40 millimeters family. And what else can I do? Uh, maybe I can play with the offset a little bit. I'm going to set this to 300 so I can distinguish it easily. And I'm going to put the distance from previous to 150 millimeters. So you can kind of see what happens here. Uh, you can see that the red baluster is further away from the yellow one. And the reason is that our distance from previous for this uh, baluster family, the 40 millimeters one is distance from previous is set 150 millimeters. All right. Uh, okay, a cool trick that I wanted to show. I, I think there, there's going to be a lot of cool trick, but this one is unknown for uh, many people. And it allows you to vertically align different types of balusters. As you can see in this image right here, we have a yellow uh, square shaped baluster on the bottom and a red one, smaller one above it, separated by an intermediate rail. Uh, so most people don't know how to do it. And it's quite a simple trick, actually. You just need to set the distance from previous of the second baluster to zero. I'm going to go back to Revit to showcase that. And I'll be, okay, I'll be using this one, this family here. You can see right now I already have two families. But now instead of having uh, a distance from one another, I want to align them. So I'm going to click here. I go back to the baluster placement menu. And you know what? Actually, I would go to the rail structure because I want to add an intermediate rail. I'm going to click here, click on insert. Uh, it can take any profile. Let's say I use this one. And I'm going to set a height of 150 millimeters and set a name to the rail. Let's call it intrail for intermediate. All right, and what happens when you create uh, this rail is it becomes available in uh, the base or top constraints. The rail can be selected as a constraint for a baluster. So the first one, uh, which is the smaller one, we're going to set the top to intermediate rail. And then the second one, we're going to set the base to intermediate rail and the top to top rail. And I'm going to remove the base and top offsets for the moment. And this is the important thing. Now the distance from previous, I'm going to set that to zero. Just like this. So hopefully this should be working. Yes, there we go. Isn't that nice? Yeah, because I've seen before people that were unable to accomplish this. So instead use the model in place tool. Uh, <laughs> in addition to the main railing, which is a nightmare if the, the railing moves, not recommended. Just having a quick lens. 
in the comments. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. Okay. Let's get back to the next part. Okay, so you, you've learned how to vertically align balusters. And now I'm going to quickly show uh, the base offsets and the top offset. Uh, so you've learned how to set the base and the top. And, uh, but you also have access to the base offset and top offset, which allows you to set a different value. Like here, you can see that the first baluster family uh, floats a little bit above the host and goes a little bit beyond the intermediate rail while the other family goes beyond the top rail. So this is pretty simple to do. I'm just going to go here to the base and top offset family. Go to baluster placement. And so here everything is set to zero. So the first one I'm going to set an offset of let's say 150 and a top offset of 200. Also a base offset of 200 for this one and let's say 150 for the top offset of this family. So you can see what happens here to the balusters. Uh, they basically ignore the rail and go beyond the, uh, the rail on the horizontal plane. Uh, just another quick thing. You might ask, how do you control like the size and the shape of uh, balusters and also the materials? Well, it's um, the baluster are made from real uh, families in Revit, real geometric 3D families, which you have to select here in the baluster family. If so, if I go to my list of family, I scroll down to find uh, railings here. So I have uh, the square shaped balusters and you have the two type, the 25 millimeters and the 40 millimeters. I'm going to click here and then you have access to width. Uh, so just one dimension, it's a square and also the material. So for some reason, I'm using parking line material for my baluster, uh, but it, that's what uh, gives the yellow color. Oh, there's people from Indonesia. So hi, Haidayat from uh, Jakarta. Hello to you. So anyway, so this is how you adjust the dimensions, uh, the width and the material of the balusters. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, justification. This is um, a little bit confusing to many people. I will say first and foremost, the most uh, frequently used feature uh, option for justification of the balusters would be spread pattern to fit. Uh, because it creates a nice uniform gap at the beginning and end of uh, the railing, which makes it easier to place post. Uh, the other option, as you can see, uh, you would have different values that will adjust uh, depending on the size of the railing, which makes it a little more difficult to control and to make uh, consistent across different railings. So the available justification option, beginning and center and spread pattern to fit. And something to keep in mind, if you're using the, justifi the beginning justification, I think it's basically about the opposite of uh, the justification you would use um, in a text editor, for example, when you justify to the left, you know, the text is placed on the left. But with uh, railings, the balusters will actually seem to be on uh, the right side, to the hand side. Uh, because beginning means that you will have the distance from previous at the beginning of it. So let's say in this example, we have a distance from previous of 100 millimeters. That means you will have 100 millimeters at the beginning, at the start of the railing, on the left in, in this case. And then at the end, on the right side of the railing, whatever is left, the exceeding uh, uh, length of the railing will be uh, random. So in this case, we have 40 millimeters, for example. Uh, and so the end justification would be the opposite of that, where the distance from previous, from the last, uh, uh, from the first balusters will be on the other side, and the exceeding value would be on the other side. Center is pretty obvious. It equally distributes uh, the exceeding length of the railing to both sides. 
And spread pattern to fit is a little bit special because it will uh, modify the distance from previous. So let's say in this case, we use a distance from previous value of 100, uh, but it modifies the value to 107 millimeters. So if you need like a super specific value, maybe spread pattern to fit uh, won't, won't work for you. But in most cases, it's still, I would say, the most helpful option. You just need to play around with the value a little bit. If, for example, you need a max opening between balusters of four inches, you would have to play the, uh, with the value until it works for you. Uh, because 100 millimeters in this case, for example, it will be the minimum value. Uh, so maybe for uh, the railing to fit what you need, you would need to put it a little below uh, 100 millimeters, like let's say uh, 95, for example, so it never go above 100 millimeters. So I'm going to showcase this in Revit. So quickly like this, can you guess what is the justification option? If I look at the edit path, oh, is this hosted? Uh, let me host this. Just a little moment. Uh, is it hosted? Yes, okay. Here we can see the arrows. As I've mentioned, the start arrows here would represent the start of the railing. So the pattern always starts from this point and the pattern end on this point. And in this case, the justification, I would guess it is based on the hand because we have a value of 100 millimeters here. And if I look on the edit type and I look at the baluster, Yes, indeed, the justification is set to N. If I switch it to center, for example, uh, you can see what happened. The residual value is spread equally between the beginning and the end. Uh, setting it to beginning would put a value of 100 millimeters at the beginning here and the residual value on the other side. But the most commonly used option, as I've already mentioned, would be spread pattern to fit. That's what I usually use, uh, which will leave an equal value at the beginning and end, which I'll explain later why this is the most helpful option to use. And let me just take a little sip. So somebody just woke up in the Philippines. Hi to uh, Ronel. So probably a little strange to be drinking a beer while some people are eating their breakfast, I guess. All right, let's move on. So uh, if anybody has any question about justification, please let me know. So, okay, now we're going to some uh, wild topic, the use balusters per tread option. Uh, so the image is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you check the little option here called use balusters per tread on stairs, everything above it, the main pattern will be ignored. So, uh, but only if the railing is set on the stairs. So again, when you check this, everything above is ignored. It doesn't serve any purpose. Okay. And then when you check these options, you basically have uh, three parameters to set. Once it's activated, then you select the number of balusters per tread, and then you select the balusters family, and that's it. There's no offset. Uh, you cannot select the top constraint or the bottom. The bottom is always the host, which would be the stringer or the treads of the, the stairs, for example. So the options are pretty limited when you choose the balusters per tread, okay? going to show this to you. So for example, here, if I'm not, uh, is it using the option or not? Balusters per tread? Yeah, it is. Okay. So this family right now is using balusters for tread option. I'm going to uncheck it and you can see what happens. So, so I uncheck this. So see what happens. The, the railings completely change. 
we now have a red uh, baluster and a yellow baluster. And if I go back to it, I go back to the baluster placement and I check that again. Well, the pattern that we have above in the menu is completely ignored and we only have a single type of baluster. And it also ignores the intermediate trail. It goes all the way to the tread of the stairs. So just to explain, once again, when you check that option, everything above it will be ignored when the railing is placed on stairs. And let's say just for fun, I'm going to change the baluster per tread option here and maybe why not pick another family and see what happens. So you can see we now have uh, three balusters per tread uh, instead of two when we switch the, the family. All right. And something else I wanted to talk about is even if the railing extends beyond the stairs, it will still be using this option, which is a little bit counterintuitive. But anyhow, let me show this to you. So for example, if I select this railing and I click on edit path, and then I would extend it like this, and why not add a boundary segment here, click on the green check to complete. So you can see what happens. The whole option is still used. Once again, I'm going to go back and uncheck this parameter just to show you what, what happened. So normally we would have kind of the regular pattern in the menu, which will be used. But since we activated and uh, use balusters per tread on stairs, uh, the main pattern is ignored for the whole railing. But let me show you something else. I'll just quickly need to set the level here. Okay. Uh, so I'll be creating a railing using the same type, okay? Like this. Okay, as you can see, this is the same type, right? But the railings are completely different. Why? Because this one is not hosted on the stairs, which means it will be using uh, the top part of the balusters menu. But this railing, even if it's the same type, it is hosted on the stairs, which means it will ignore this menu and instead use the balusters per tread and the family that you've set up here. So again, the whole above part is ignored here. And I also wanted to show you a little bug that we have, sadly, a glitch that there doesn't seem to be any uh, help for you is that the balusters don't go all the way to the floor. They keep the shape of, uh, of the stairs to extend like beyond the slope. As you can see here. So I don't think there's any sol kind of out of the box solution for this issue. You usually need to, uh, to work around or maybe just create a different uh, railing completely. But that's this kind of a glitch I hope Autodesk would fix. Okay. Oh yeah, and something interesting is if you change the, the actual tread depth in, uh, on the stairs, let me go back to the stairs. Actual tread depth, okay. So, so I'm playing around with the stairs just for fun. Let's say I'm gonna put this to 500. So you can see what happens to railings. The spacing between the balusters is changed because we've set uh, three balusters per tread and it's still keeping three balusters per tread, but since we modified the actual tread depth like this, uh, the spacing will be automatically uh, modified. Modified not only above the stairs, but for the whole railing. So check that out. I'm setting up 500 here. See what happens to the rest of the railing. <laughs> so I'm guessing most of you don't want something like this. Uh, to happen. That's why, um, you know, the use balusters per tread uh, option is sometimes not the best. Taking a look at a comment, Payam says, 
issue with justified balusters, you could have code conflict if you have to maximum space between balusters. Yeah, that's a good point. If you would uh, spread pattern to fit, just make sure that uh, your balusters don't go beyond code requirement, which is at least here, it's uh, four inches, maximum hole. Okay. So these are the weird options you will find for balusters. Where are we right now? The balusters glitch. Oh yeah, the balusters offset. Uh, as you might have noticed, you have a parameters for offset. Offset would be uh, the distance between the balusters and the railing path line, which is usually represented in purple. Uh, so a negative value would put it on the right side, while a positive value would put it to the left side of the railing. That is for railing that is not hosted uh, on the floor. So I'm going to play with the offset of this railing, for example, which as you can see, the beginning is over here and the end is right there. So for the railing, this would be the right side and this would be the left side. I'm going to go to edit type. I'm going to go with baluster placement and, 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 and so you have the offset value here. And for the, the first one, I'm going to put a value of a hundred. So as you can see, it goes to the right side and let's say for the other one, I'm going to put a negative value. Let's say a minus a hundred. So we can see what happens. The negative value would put it to the left side. Um, okay, I'll show you something. Let's say that I apply this railing type to the one on the stair. Like this. Okay, as you might notice, uh, the red balusters always goes inward, inside the interior side of the railing. That's because if I go back to the PowerPoint here. Uh, when placed on stairs, uh, a negative value will always set the balusters to the interior side. Uh, yeah, negative value set it on the inter interior side, while a positive value will set it on the exterior side. So it's a little bit different when it's hosted. Instead of being, you know, uh, on the left side, right side is always relative to the uh, interior side of the uh, the stairs instead. That is when the use balusters per thread option is not activated, in which case you don't have access to the offset value anyway. Just taking a little sip here. I have uh, hear that saying, enjoy your beer. I'm having my morning coffee. Yes, that's uh, the marvel of having multiple time zones. Cheers and have a good morning. Okay. Oh, we're already at posts. Okay, this should be fun. So posts are a funny subject. You have the star post, uh, the end post, and the corner post. And to understand where is the star post, you know, which side of the railing it is, have a look at the arrows, the blue arrows. So once again, uh, on the image, this image, you can see the star post is represented here where the blue arrow is pointing. And uh, the end post would be here where the arrow is pointing to the exterior side of the railing path. And the corner post would be every time you have an intersection. But that's a big if, it depends what options are activated in certain cases. So in railing types, you can always select, do you want just a, a star post? Do you want also star post and just end? Do you want only a corner post? All the options are available to you. Okay, so let me quickly showcase this here. I'm going to switch the justification to spread pattern to fit because as I've said, it's easier to use this option when working with post because I have consistent value at the beginning consistent value at the end regardless of the railing length so first to start you can see uh, by looking at the arrows this will be the start 
of my railing. So I'm going to add a start post by going to the menu here and selecting, uh, let's say this family baluster plus uh, classical. So there we go. I have uh, my super big post at the beginning of the railing, so big that it intersects with another baluster. We're going to fix that in a moment. But let's, let's say that uh, you think that the start of your railing shouldn't be here. It should be on the other side, just over there. Well, you can edit the path and click on the blue arrows here, which is going to switch the direction of your railing. And now your post switch position to over, over there. Uh, take notice that this doesn't really work if your railing is hosted on the stairs because the direction would be fixed, you know, it would consider the start as the bottom of the stairs. So let's say I switch that again, clicking here. And now I'm going to add uh, an end post like this. There we go. And oh, is it time to show this? I'm going to talk about uh, the spacing value of the post. So if I go, you can see here that my rail and my balusters are in conflict with the post because, I mean, let me go to the menu on baluster placement. And here we have an option called space. And space would be the offset along the line, the railing path line. Let me just show this to you on this image here. By the way, all the images you can see here are available on the, the pamphlet for those who might have joined recently. As I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, you can find the link uh, on the description. It's revitpure.com live. You can find this PDF as well as the new pamphlet where you'll find all this information. But anyway, here you can look what happens with the space value. For the start, a negative value will push the post to the interior of the railing. Yeah, negative value would push it inside, while a positive value would push it outside. So if you want your post, for example, to be um, just inside of it, that works if it's a small post, you know, not a big one like I've modeled. Uh, I would use a negative value of 0.12.5, assuming that uh, this, this post has a radius of 25, so it would be half of it. So I'm going, instead of just speaking, I'm going to demonstrate it. So for the first one here, uh, it has a space of 12.5. Uh, I'm going to change that. Just let me look again. Yes, we need uh, to have a positive value to push it outside. So I'm going to put a value, let's try, I think it's a pretty big post. So I'm going to put a hundred millimeters. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, is it because I switched? No, okay. So I actually, it's a negative value that I need to set. So instead of a hundred, I'm going to put minus a hundred. There we go. Uh, so this way you can keep a gap uh, between your post, especially if you have a big one and the first baluster. But something you need to be aware of though, is that the post will extend beyond the railing path line. So I have the railing path line here. Maybe I can activate the preview and you can see that the post goes uh, beyond it. So you have to take that into consideration when creating the boundaries of uh, the railing. So let's say I would want to do the same thing for this one. Uh, so this one, instead of having a negative value, it would be a positive value and it's push it to the exterior side like this. Um, just quickly looking at the questions here. To continue with different balusters and wheeling, we should create a new one. Balusters and wheeling. Uh, I'm not sure what the question is referring to. I would say if it's uh, you know referring to this, where you have a different pattern with the same type, but when 
it's placed on stairs is different when it's not. I would say, yeah, that might be pretty confusing to most users, so better create a different type anyway. We explained balusters, excess length field, pattern length, and spacing. Yes, that is quite a complicated thing, sadly. Uh, I think I'll go quickly because I think this is this option is mostly used when creating glass railings. It's really not easy to use. I've tried to mess around with it for a while. And it's not something I've ever used in an actual project. Uh, but to explain quickly what is excess length fail, this option is, let's say that you have a big gap at the end of the railing. It would take what gap is left and fill it with a specific kind, specific kind of uh, balusters. And here we can uh, select the spacing of the, because you can have multiple element in the excess uh, length fail. So this, this could be a whole topic on itself. It's a little bit complicated. I, I think I'll do a blog post about it because it's not totally research on my hand. And the use of it, I'm not quite sure. I really think it's mostly used for uh, uh, glass railings. Uh, regardless, I'm going to cancel here. Okay, so we've learned how to set, uh, to use the space value to offset, uh, well, it's an offset to put space between the post and the other balusters. Uh, and now we're going to be talking about corner post. If I'm back to my PDF. Okay, there's an option called, I'm going to go directly in Revit. If you want to have corner post, uh, the first thing you need to set up is there's an option here, here called break pattern at, okay? Right now it is set at never. What does this mean? It means that even at intersection, the pattern will keep itself. So I'll zoom in this. You can see here, well, this is, this pretty much fit with the end of the, let me just move this a little bit. As you can see, the pattern in the preview, uh, the balusters would move kind of regardless of the intersection. Basically, the pattern doesn't reset at the intersection. And that is because we use uh, this option, break pattern at never. I would say the most uh, common option would be to break pattern at each segment end. And what this does, is that you'll always have uh, a baluster at a corner, right? It's because the pattern restarts at the corner. And if you want a post at a corner, you will also need to activate another option called corner posts at. And here I will set each segment end. Now, if I click OK, nothing will appear. Why? Because I didn't set up my post corner post family yet. It's set to none. So let's say that I use the same one. And there we go. I have my, uh, my corner family. Okay, so once again, two options needed to work with corner post. Uh, the first one uh, break pattern at set each segment end here and corner post also each segment end. So both these options need to be set up. Okay. That's important. And also make sure to set up a family here. You know what? Just for fun, where I'm going to set the top offset to make it taller than the, the start and beginning. There you go. A little bit taller in the corner. Okay. Another thing, then it's okay. Time is flying. I'll just finish this and then we'll move on to create the baluster family. Uh, split segment. If this option is activated, each segment and each time you split the segment, uh, Revit will create a corner post. So, like in this example, we have a straight line, but instead of having one big straight line, we instead have multiple segments. So going back to Revit, what I'll do here is I'll use, do I have a split? Yes, there we go. 
So check this out. I have the split element here. And I split here and what happens? It creates a corner post like magic. So any segment I would split So now if I edit the type, I have multiple small segments and at the end of each segment, uh, a post family is created. Yeah, and the thing to keep in mind, and you might see it uh, here, is that here we're using the spread pattern to fit, okay? And you can see here, my post is so big that it, <laughs> There's two balusters completely inside of it. Not much to do about it. That's rivet. Uh, and I'm just going to add a dimension. So I'm just setting a work plane here like this. And I'm going to create a dimensions. So here I have a spacing of 96. And here I have a spacing of 100. And here I have spacing of 102 and so it's inconsistent and why it is inconsistent it is because we're using the spread pattern to fit option uh, which means that rivet will equally divide so this is a segment rivet will equally divide my baluster pattern inside uh, this little line so for each line rivet will create a uh, pattern of balusters of the same dimensions so like if you really don't like that, it bothers you and you want always the same dimension, well, you would have to use the center option, for example. Like this, but the problem, what I don't like about this, it's it's too inconsistent at the beginning and end of the railings like this. We have a super small dimension that create a conflict with another balusters. Uh, so this is why I don't like to use um, uh, the center justification. I still prefer spread pattern to fit. I just hope that you could set instead of uh, having distance from previous, it would be the minimum distance. So you would know it never goes uh, below four inches, for example. So Payam, yes. Payam talks about the little trick about splitting the railing path line. Just taking a little break to take a sip here. I hope everybody is enjoying it so far. So let me know in the comments what you think. It's fun, but I think next time I'll uh, I'll try to bring uh, guests on because it's it's more fun to have a discussion interaction. Uh, um, okay. Where are we at now? Okay, it's time for the family. This is going to be fun. This is, there's a lot of meat here. Again, if you go at rivetpure.com, you will find this image. Love the show so far. Thanks. Uh... Yeah, so we're gonna create a baluster family. So going to Revit, okay here. Clicking on new family. And I know some of you, different, depending on the country where you're located, you might not have exactly the same template files, family templates. But what I'm using here is uh, baluster. You can see there's a few different options. There's panel. Uh, post, but I'm using the first one, metric baluster. There we go. And something super specific about the baluster family is that by default, you will get uh, these diagonal lines over here on the top and uh, on the bottom. And so you need to make sure to make your family so the geometry is cut with these lines. So if your baluster is placed on the stairs, it will be uh, also cut diagonally. 
Um, okay, so the first thing I need to do here is to set new reference planes. You're here in this image, they're represented in pink or kind of purple-ish. So I'm going to create one uh, just below the top and one just above the bottom. And then I'm going to constrain them to whatever the fixed section of uh, the baluster is going to be. So right here, I'm picking a new reference plane. So I'm going to create a new subcategory to make a different color. I'm going to create uh, whatever name you want to use. I'm going to use purple line. Again, a line, line here. And so creating a reference plane like this and one below. And I'll set dimensions here. For the moment, I'll set 100 millimeters, but I don't need to lock the dimension for now. The dimension that needs to be locked actually is this one. You know what? I'm going to set this to 700 instead. Okay, so this value I'm going to, uh, to lock at 500. By the way, if you want to follow along, the sample file is on the uh, the link in the description below. You can download the image profile and all these instructions are also there. So I, I encourage you to uh, try this little exercise too. Okay, now it's time to place and scale the image. So the middle section fits in the middle part of uh, the reference planes. I'm gonna click on insert, import image, whatever. Okay, where is it? It's, it's a mess on my desktop as usual. Okay, there you go. So again, I'm going to scale this like this and I want the middle section uh, to fit. So a little trick that you can do, I'm just going to place this here and I'm going to use the scale tool here. Use graphical, click once over there. Click where I want the, the final dimension to be set in. Click here and bringing back to the purple reference plane like this. And I'm going to move it the center of the profile to fit just like this. There you go. And so now you're ready to use the revolve tool. So revolve, you draw a profile, you set an axis and the profile is going to rotate around the axis, creating the balusters geometry we want to use here. Uh, but the first thing Revit is going to ask you uh, when creating a Revolve. Where's the tool? Revolve, there we go. It is going to ask you to select a work plane. So select the left, right top plane. I'm currently on the left view. So you basically select uh, a reference plane that matches the view. Okay. And now you need to draw over the image that you've brought in this. Oh, so I'm going to use thin line shortcut TL to make these lines uh, smaller. Like this using uh, the arc tool. So this is the boring part, just reproducing whatever is in, on the image. I'll take the opportunity to drink a little sip. All right, uh, okay. Okay, and a little trick I'm going to show you. Uh, um is that we know that this is the 
This is the middle section of the, the profile and this is symmetrical. So instead of drawing the whole thing, I'm just going to use a reflection. So something I'm going to do is I know this should be 250 millimeters. So it is centered. So this is the reflection line. So let's say I bring this here. I'm selecting all these lines but not this one, and I'm using the mirror tool here, picking this. There we go, and the profile is, re is reflected. And finally, I'm uh, drawing the final line at the center here. And so the profile itself is complete. Now I just need to create uh, the axis line, which will be in the center of reflection for the, the profile. So I can pick the reference plane like this. If I remove thin line, this is what it should be looking like. The instructions in the, in the pamphlet and PDF are pretty clear in this regard, if you want to uh, take a look. So back here, the rivet. There we go. So you can have a look in the in the 3D view to make sure your profile fits and it's not looking too stupid. It seems to be to be right. Going back to the left view. And just to be sure, I can uh, lock the shape at the bottom and top. The reference planes here. Okay, what is the next step? Okay, creating the extrusion. So the profile I want to create, actually I'm gonna scroll a little bit. Um, at the end it should be looking like this, which means that I have uh, kind of a rectangular shape at the bottom and top, and these are the shapes that are gonna be cut diagonally. So I'm simply going to create extrusions using the pick lines tool. Although I would need yeah, I would still need to create reference planes. So just give me a moment here. Yeah, I would need to create new reference planes on the right side and the left side. Like this. And I would need to set the dimension. Let's say I set 65 enough. Okay, 65 should work just to be to go a little bit beyond uh, the baluster. So again, setting 65 here, above and below. I will going to lock that dimension. Just scroll this. Okay, so I'm ready to create the extrusion. Go to the create menu, select extrusion. Again, pick the left, right, yeah, left, right, uh, reference planes. And then I'm going to use the pick line and make sure to hit the little lock icon here to constrain. Like this, like this, like this. So everything is locked. And now I need to use the trim tool, shortcut TR, or just by clicking here, I'm going to trim the lines together. Go and I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. So once again, creating extrusion, left, right, using the pick lines tool, this one, lock. Repeating the same process, then using the trim tool. There we go. And now uh, I can go to this view and then you see the extrusion right now, it's not fitting properly. So I'm going to create a reference plane using my new type. Also in this view on the front elevation. 
and I'm going to put the same the same value of 65 I use for the other elevation on the left side. So here setting 65 and locking it up. 65 again, lock this up. 65, all right. We don't need these two actually. I can lock, oh, I already locked. And then I can use the align tool and I'm going to align the boundaries of the top extrusion lock like this. Set the bottom two. Okay, so I can have a look at the 3D view to see what's going on. So this is my geometry. Anyone have any question about the creation of this little Bowster family so far? Just let me know. Taking a small sip. So for those wondering, uh, we're almost done with this family. This is the, the last part of the stream. So about 10, 15 minutes left and we'll be done for the night or for the morning for those uh, in Asia. Okay, you can also have a look at the, the plan view to set the extrusion, but we did it in the front elevation. And as you can see, the geometry itself is mostly complete. Uh, something that you can do is try multiple baluster height to see what happens. I'm going to the left elevation and I'm changing the, the baluster height here. And you can see the family works, although uh, we do have kind of a small issue. Maybe that's uh, what you want to happen. But the issue is that when you change the height, everything goes is added to the top rectangle extrusion. But what if, if you want to reduce, uh, to equally spread uh, the excess length on the bottom and the top? Uh, and what we're going to do here is add a central reference plane and then add equal values. So quite simply, I'm going to create a new reference plane creating new dimensions like this. Um, so I'm clicking on the small EQ button here. So this reference plane center is always on the center of these two. Just setting this back to 700. And I'm going to do the same thing for this, so this is also EQ. Okay, so you have two EQ dimensions set to the central reference plane. And now see what happens when you change the baluster height. Uh, the excess height is redistributed on the top and bottom. So you can try any value and see what happens. So isn't that cool? Now I can remove the image. And did I forget something? Oh yes, the uh, material parameter. So it's a terrible practice to set uh, the material directly in the family. What you want to do instead, so I'm going to 3D view, I select the whole thing. Uh, click here on associate family parameter on the small rectangle. And I'm going to create a new parameter. Click here, new parameter. I'm going to call it uh, baluster material. Click OK. And a parameter is associated to the baluster. And now our family should be complete. Just quickly checking my PDF to make sure I didn't forget anything. Now it should be done. So anybody has tried to follow along with the family, uh, let me know in the comment. If you have any issue or question about this, I know it can be a little bit complex, but I think the steps in the pamphlets and presentation are quite simple and clear. So it should be, you should be fine. So I'm going to save this family. I'm going to call it uh, live, live baluster. Isn't that a cool name? Okay. And 
then I'm going to load it in the project. Okay, so now, now my baluster family is in the project. Do I have something here? Okay, so this is kind of a completed uh, using the existing baluster that, that I created before. And now I have this ugly, boring railing here. And I want to switch these boring balusters to the family we just created. So I'm going to go to edit type. And I'm going to go to uh, baluster placement. I'm going to uncheck use balusters per thread because it probably won't work that well with uh, the family that I've created. And so I'm going to use print pattern to fit. And here I'm going to switch this boring baluster to the new one, the live baluster. All right, what I was saying, what was I saying? Okay, so I have the live balusters and I have to switch a distant distance from previous because we know it's quite big. So 100 millimeters won't cut it. I'm going to try 200 for the moment. And I'm going to remove the base offset for the moment. And okay, it is working. And I can see on the stairs, it is, well, it is also working. You can see there's a slope here. Although my top profile is kind of garbage, it doesn't fit at all with this, this style of baluster. And I still have my intermediate railing, which doesn't really fit here. And you can see this is quite a short railing, so I'm going to boost that a little bit. Top rail is set at 650. Uh, I'm going to put that at 800. All right, you can see that the, square, the rectangle shape is getting bigger. Uh, now I'm going to change the top rail because this is ugly. Clicking, just for those of you who don't know, click on the three small dots here. And I'm going to use a different profile. So I have a rectangle. Um, I'm going to use a classical profile, which is something I've, I've pre-made before. Click on apply and OK. OK, so I have this uh, profile set up. It's uh, fitting uh, nicely with the baluster. Now I have to fix the intermediate one. Uh, so this is too high. I'm going to set it to 100. And I'm going to use this profile instead. And in this case, I want uh, the balusters to be set to the intermediate trail. So I'm going to change the base of the balusters instead of hoax. I'm going to be selecting intermediate trail. There we go. Isn't that cool? And so what is nice about this baluster family is if you modify the height of it, it nicely adapts and the uh, center part, you know, with the fancy profile is always going to be centered on uh, the baluster. And why not? I can add post here just for the sake of it. So start post. I'm going to use the classical post. And also at the end, click apply. There we go. All right. Is there something else? I think we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, just a quick final tip that I wanted to uh, sh uh, show you guys. It's, I wanted to show you this uh, railing on stairs here. Uh, anyone knows how to do this? Well, it's actually super simple, you know, to have the top part of the railing flat, but the bottom part hosted on the stairs. And the only thing I had to do is that I select a railing path line here, and on the slope, I select flat. 
So let's, I'm going to switch back by house. So this is kind of a regular, you know, boring railing. Uh, but if you want the fancy type, click on edit path, select the line and change the slope to flat. And then you have a flat top, you know. Um, are you going to upload this? Yes, hopefully, unless there are technical difficulties, this should be on YouTube, at least I hope. But yes, you, you should have access to it later on. Uh, so the main part of the session is over. I went through the whole pamphlet number two. Again, I'm going back to the URL. Uh, if you go to revpure.com slash live, you have access to the pamphlet. So everything I've discussed is right here in the pamphlet. If I went too fast for you, uh, you can take your time with this. You also will find a sample file. You have the presentation, you have the image. Everything is here on the Revit pure.com slash live just checking the question quickly and then we'll conclude can you please show how to change color material for balusters uh, versus for railing yes that's a great question that's another thing that is confusing about railings and rivet because rails like the top rail intermediate rail and uh, handrail are made using only a profile while the balusters are made using a, a real loadable families. So you, for balusters, you set the material inside the family type, but for uh, the top rail, you actually have a different type. So let, <laughs> let me show this to you since it sounds complicated. Okay, let's say I have this railing here and I want to change the material of the top rail. I would need to go here and click on edit type. On top rail, I click on the three small dots. And here is the material that it can change. I have my material panel. What can I use? Uh, let's say glass, why not, right? So I've just set the glass material for uh, the top rail. And it's basically the same principle for intermediate rail. The material is directly here but as you might have noticed, the material is not available directly here on the railings menu, type menu for the balusters and for the post. Uh, you will find these settings. You have to go to the, the project browser here, scroll to balusters and then find the family and double click on the type. And that's where you should have uh, the material. And hopefully the family is well made and you can change the material directly in Revit. If you have a bad family, maybe somebody uh, didn't uh, put a customizable material for you to change inside Revit. So do I have my live baluster? Okay, I have it here. What material do I want to use? What about a laminate red? Uh, Okay, now, so my baluster is red. So that's the idea of it. So the question seems to have been answered so far. So I'll be concluding this. Uh, again, go to rivetpure.com slash live to download all the content. And another link I might share with you, let's say that you are a beginner and you didn't understand anything about this presentation. Uh, well, go to rivetpure.com slash railings and you will find a beginner guide here that's part of the basics package and you will find everything I've ever done about railings basically for the last uh, three months I've researched railings non-stop because I had a complicated project with complicated railings and I wanted to uh, dig deep into it and so make sure to check this URL if you want to learn more about railings. Everything is on there. And else, if you want to support the show, make sure to check out basics package, our template, or the design package. Uh, always a great help to us. And yeah, that's it for that's it for me basically. Uh, this was the first show. It went well. I had fun. And it's a blast to be doing this at my home studio while drinking beer. Uh, 
basically I moved here a few months ago and I've made this uh, amazing little studio space uh, to work on Revit Pure and on other projects. So I'm expecting to do a lot more of these. I want to bring uh, guests on the show, um, people of different kind, people that make uh, amazing plugins, for example, to discuss their work and other experts. Maybe I'll ask uh, Jeff from the Revit Kit to come on. Anyway, so any other questions before I leave? Thanks to everybody. Thanks, uh, Payam, for the questions. Thanks, Dave and Esteban. Anyway, this is the end of the stream. Um, just a, a quick update tomorrow. I have a best of post of the year, the most popular blog post on the Rivet Pure website and some other uh, nice thing that happened this year. And then it will be it for this year. I'm going to take a little break and I hope uh, all of you spend some great time despite COVID, um, obviously. But uh, yes, I'm wishing a great one to everybody. Thanks you so much for being part of the stream and asking questions. Uh, it was a blast. I'm for sure I'm going to do this again. It was a lot of fun. So thanks everybody. That was super appreciated to see all of you.